Okay, in the last session we looked at tax and benefit policies in some detail. We looked at the way that they were constructed from functions which were in turn um, constructed from parameters. In this session we're going to put that into practice because what we're going to do is learn how to add a new system to TASMOD and I'll say why in a minute how to implement a change to an existing policy in TASMOD. We'll do quite a simple and straightforward change in order to get the hang of it. And then how to add a new policy to TASMOD, again using a fairly straightforward example. Now, adding a new system. Why do we add a new system? Well, I think I've said in an earlier session, we add a new system if we want to include a new policy year. So. Um, at the moment we have 2012 and 2015, we will be wanting to add 2016 and indeed 2017. But, importantly, we want it if we want to implement a new reform scenario. A new system is definitely in order. Why is this good practice? Well, because if you amend policies in an existing system, um, the, you tend to corrupt that existing system, particularly if something goes wrong, um, and you don't have a record of the existing system if you're not careful. So it's always good practice to construct a reform system so that the parameters of the existing policies are preserved as a record in the system, uh, the, the, either the base system or the 2015 system, or whatever system you're basing the changes on. OK, and a new system is initially always a copy of an existing system. can use an already implemented system as a template. You can use the base system or you can use 2015 in, in our case. In the first instance, the new system is an exact copy of the base system, um, except that uh, the name of the output file will be different and uh, can we use it configured to run with the same data sets as the base system. Now there are two ways of adding a new system and I'll show you both in this presentation but also live. Um, so first of all you can use the add system um, button which is in the tab country tools. You can use this for deleting systems as well. Or you can right click on the existing system you want to copy um, and then choose a name for the new system in the in the box that pops up that follows. So the new system then gets added to the main workspace in the way shown here. And the systems are also listed, uh, added to the list in the country tools, systems and databases. Now I'm going to go across to the model and show you how this works in practice. One of the other things I'll show you to begin with is um, how to hide a system. Because actually we're going to base our reform system on 2015. So let's hide 2012. You can do that by right clicking again and go to move selected system to hid, hidden systems box. That's great, we can even close that box down because it, it, it preserves it, but it allows us more space to look at just the system that we are, are going to base the new system on. Now, two ways of doing it, and I can do it in both ways. We can go to the country tools, add system, um, we want to base it on 2015, so you click 2015, say OK, and then give the um, system a new name. And we'll call it Reform 1 in this case. OK, and then it pops in there as a direct copy. Now I'm going to delete that system, so I'll click on it. Um, and then delete system because I'm going to show you the other way of doing it which is the way I usually use 
So we say OK. Are we going to delete that system? Yes, we are. So now we right click on the existing um, TZ 2015 system and then we do copy paste system and the new system name, we'll just call it reform this time. It's just a, a tad quicker to do it this way and we've achieved the same as we had um, before. Okay, and it's on this reform system we will uh, do our um, policy changes and, and uh, um, creating new policies etc. So let's go back to the presentation. So, so the, two, the two policy changes we talked about is changing an existing policy and there are some fairly simple ones or more complex. Um, amending a means test threshold for example or a cash transfer amount is a very simple change to an existing policy. You often have to do this on an annual basis anyway when you implement a new year because sometimes in some countries these things change on an annual basis. Next, you might want to remove a means test or, or add an extra amount for meeting a particular criteria. This is a slightly more difficult. Again, some countries are moving towards having so-called universal or non-means tested um, uh, benefits. South Africa currently is considering removing the means test from both the child support grant and the old age grant. Um, Another thing you might want to do is add um, an extra criteria. For example, if you were implementing some kind of uh, old age pension, be it means tested or non means tested, you might want to add, if, you, if you'd already implemented such a system, you might want to add a supplement for those over 80 or, or something. That, that certainly also exists in some countries. Um, and then you might, if you've got a means test to benefit, want to uh, vary the means test by some kind of characteristic of the person being tested. That's uh, w way more complex, but they're all eminently achievable. And the examples that we give will tackle some of these. And sim similarly, you can just add an, a completely new policy, like a new social benefit. Okay, how will we change an existing policy? Well, we're going to use, stick with our old favourite, the BSA BCHOT policy, because if you remember, that's the policy that looks at the fixed basic cash transfer for people that are getting them, um, and or the variable conditional cash transfer, um, and it currently imposes a ceiling of 19,000 Tanzanian shillings per month on the combined payments of the fixed basic cash transfer and the variable conditional tra cash transfer. There it is, that's the one that was actually implemented in the model, remember using BenCalc. In the last um, presentation you remember I showed it being implemented by a combination of the Elledge function and the Arathot function but I also intimated it's more straightforwardly done with a BenCalc and that's what it's actually done within the model and so this is a clip from the actual model. So what we're we going to do, um, we're going to increase the maximum amount from 19,000 shillings a month and we're also going to introduce a minimum amount and remember when I talked about constants in the session where we looked at um, definitional policies, we're going to actually convert uh, the, uh, the the figures, both the upper limit that exists already in the policy, but the new upper limit, and the new lower limit um, into constants. So we'll be doing both of those things in changing the existing policy. And again, what I'll do is um, show it to you first in the PowerPoint and then flip over um, to the uh, and policy itself. Okay, so the first thing to do is copy the latest system and name it TZ 2015 Reform. Well we've done that, I showed you that um, when we were introducing a new system. And then 
next introduce lower and upper thresholds as constants. So a lower limit of say a thousand shillings a month and an upper limit of instead of 19,000 let's have 20,000. So the first step is to go to the constant definition um, and right click to add two new placeholders. Then rename the placeholders to dollar BSA BCHOT. So I'll take a note of that because that's what I will do and that's what you should do. Underscore lower and another one BSA BCHOT underscore upper. And then place the, uh, uh, the upper and lower limits into those constants. So it's a thousand for the lower per month and it's 20,000 for the upper. So let's do all of that. I'll move across now to the model. So the first thing we're going to the constant definition okay and there it is that's all the constants so far defined. Um, in fact there is one called PSSN cap which is effectively the BSA B shot upper but I want to just introduce two new ones so that you can see how they're done. And how you do that is that you right click on def const and then show add parameters form and then click on placeholder because you want to add two new parameters and you first of all put them in as a placeholder and then you just um, say how many you want and we want two not just the one so count two and then add and then close and you'll see these two new placeholders at the bottom and we can now name these we can call one dollar BSA shot lower and then I'll control C because I'm bad and slow typist then put it into the second but then rename that BSA BCHOT upper. Now it's not applicable in the 2015 scenario because that's the base scenario that we're working from but it is applicable in the uh, reform scenario so we'll put the lower one in at 1000 and it's good practice to put hash M because that will say it's monthly and the upper one is 20,000 again hash M meaning monthly. Um, if you don't put hash M it will assume monthly for these amounts because all of the calculations in TASMOD stroke Euromod are done at the monthly level. So we've got the 1,000, 20,000 and then we should annotate it and put um, uh, policy uh, BSA B shot um, lower limit and then same again but upper okay so that's effectively done that. We've um, entered the constants. Let's go back to the presentation now because this will be shown in the slide format here. Right click and then get the add parameter form, add in the two placeholders um, and then uh, give them the appropriate values but only in the 2015 reform system. Okay, Then we go to the policy itself then in the BSA BCHOT underscore TZ policy we go to the BenCalc function which we've shown already and right click to access add parameter as we just did in the def const then we select lower limb and move it above upper limb. 
and then we enter the new constant for the lower limit in the appropriate cell and finally enter the new constant for the upper limit in the appropriate cell. So let's go and do that now actually in the model. So we now close up the constant definition, go to look at our BSA BCHOP policy. We're going to, as I said, enter, uh, first of all add a parameter so we show the add parameter form and this time we want lower limb we've already got upper limb so here we go here's low limb okay and we add that as a parameter and close and you'll see low limb is there it's quite nice to have them in the right place so we've got low limb first then upper limb um, the we're working only in this reform scenario, so we give the lower limit the value of the lower limit constant. So we type in dollar B S A B shot lower, and you see it, it it gives it in the list. So we can select that, and then for upper limit, we this time calculate it as sorry enter dollar B S A B shot upper. Okay, so now we've effectively amended that policy in the model itself. Again, let's slip back to the actual presentation um, and I'll do this in screenshots as well. So we've got the, sorry, I'll go back to that. We've got um, the lower and the upper limit entered um, into the new um, BSA BCHOP policy in the reform. Note that in the non-reform the lower limit is not applicable um, because it's only in the reform policy that we're putting the lower limit in. And of course in the reform, the upper limit's no longer 19,000, but it's what's contained in that constant BSA BCHOT underscore upper, which we know is actually 20,000 now and not 19,000. Okay. Right, so that's um, how you amend an existing policy. Pretty straightforward. But a lot of steps. Um, now, we're going to do something more radical now, is that we're going to add a new policy. And we're going to make it a fairly straightforward policy, and it's going to be a universal child benefit. So, again, we copy the latest system and name it the reform, which um, clearly we've already done, actually, in the model that we're uh, working with. And then you have to choose where on the spine the new policy should be located. Remember, I said when we talked about spines that the spine lists the different policies um, within a system in the order in which they need to be executed. So if a new policy relies on the output of an earlier policy, um, then um, you need to position that new policy after the earlier policy and I gave an example in the earlier one that related to the uh, BUN, BUN underscore TZ policy in, in, in respect of um, public works programs. So we right click then on the policy before the one you want to introduce and select. So let's do it first of all on the screen here and then I'll do it for real. So we've got to use the add policy after um, and we then select the kind of policy, a benefit policy, and then name the policy. We're going to name it BCH underscore TZ. Why? Because the output variable BCH is a standard Euromod output variable and it means benefit for a child. B benefit CH child. Um, and you name the policy after the output variable. 
Next, we right click on the new policy name and select a function. And for this function, BenCalc will be used, although we could have done a combination of Elige and Arathop as before. And we must remember to turn the policy um, and function on. OK, so this is it, the, the menus, and I'm going to take you through the actual model in a second. So we add function and we add BenCalc, and that puts in um, the uh, new policy BCH um, underscore TZ, it puts in the function BenCalc, it puts us in a com a, 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 an eligibility condition and an amount per tax unit, uh, sorry, uh, which is equivalent to the formula, and an output variable and a tax unit. So what we're going to do is make it very simple. The, the con eligibility condition is that you've got to be a child, and for that we're going to have someone who's greater than or equal to zero. Now zero-year-olds actually are um, babies in, 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 in the TASMOD data set, um, they are people who have been born but have not yet reached their first birthday. So it's greater than or equal to zero and age less than 18. And the amount is the uh, child benefit amount which we're going to introduce as a constant. And the output variable is BCH underscore S and the tax unit is individual. Um, so we may have to introduce that new variable using the variables tool if necessary um, and also we may have to add bch underscore s to the output policy if necessary. Now let's do all of that actually on the model. So let's let me shift across to the model itself. This is the actual model, right? And we will actually put um, our bch after bun um, which is the uh, um, eligibility for public works, doesn't have to be there um, because it's not relying on previous information because there's no means test and there's no um, other eligibility criteria. It, it, we might have added some other eligibility criteria because we, we might, for example, have said you can't get this new child benefit if you're getting one of the child-related um, um, products productive social safety net benefits um, that, that have a child um, addition for. However, we didn't. We want to give it to all children in this case. So we're going to add policy after, and we're going to add a benefit policy. OK, we're going to give it a name, and we're giving it a name of BCH underscore S, as we agreed. Uh, sorry, underscore S, underscore TZ. It's the actual... The underscore S is the simulated variable that will be the output variable. BCH underscore TZ is the name of the policy. OK. So we'll put it in. We've got BCH um, underscore TZ. It's got no functions in it. We'll, it's got printed Ben, though, and we'll call it Universal Child Benefit. Then automatically there, okay. Um, then we're going to put a function, so this is add function, as we said, and we're going to use BenCalc. So we're adding the function BenCalc, it automatically puts in for us the parameters that a standard BenCalc has. You can add additional parameters to BenCalc, um, but um, this, is the, this is the ones you usually get. We're only putting it in a reform, um, and I think the conditions were relating to only to age, which is that DAG was greater than or equal to zero, close curly brackets. Each um, condition has to be enclosed in curly brackets, you'll remember. And then we wanted AND, and then we open the curly brackets again, um, DAG less than, in this case, 18, end curly brackets. So that's straightforward uh, condition. Now the amount or the formula goes into there. We haven't actually introduced an amount yet. So let's pause and go back to the defining constants 
and define a new constant. Right click, you remember, show add parameter form, you remember, put a placeholder in because it's a new, uh, something new we're going to add in, um, and then close, and we should find an empty placeholder at the bottom. We do, we can call this dollar bch underscore amount. We can call it what we like, it's just good to call it something meaningful. Um, and we can call it, put the amount in for anything we like. Let's, let's put it in for 4,000 hash m. And that's the monthly amount for universal child benefit. Uh, um, so that's straightforward. Now we've got that introduced, so now we need to actually put that as the amount that people will get in the formula box. So we'll put dollar BC H amount. Okay. The output variable, I've already talked about that. The standard one is BCH underscore S, and it does exist, so it's in that list. Um, if it didn't exist, I'll show you what we would do. The tax unit, this is, we're testing each individual child, so the tax unit is going to be individual. You can just use the drop down men, menu here and put TU individual TZ. And then, obviously, it's good practice to annotate all this. It's important to turn this on and this on. And then finally, it's important to make sure that the standard output as contains will contain this new variable BCH. In fact, it does because, um, if I'm not mistaken, there's a wildcard B, which means all variables beginning with B, it's a var variable group, are actually output into the output file. So we don't need to specifically put it in. We might if we were putting in um, something that wasn't already in our standard output file, like for example as we wanted to output some in intermediate variable, we might want to specify that specifically in the output file. So that's all great. So that's pretty well done. We've turned it on. Um, I did mention that if the variable that you wanted to use didn't exist, you would need to create that in the administration tools and the variables tool. Um, that's something that, again, we can talk about uh, more um, and will have done in classes. Um, but in fact, this is the list of already variables already there, and you'll see that variable 44 is bch underscore s. If not, you can create new variables, you can add variables, and indeed, you can add acronyms if the, if the acronym isn't already created but uh, it, it's fine as far as we're concerned. So we've created this and I think we've now got a policy um, that's switched on, that's output variables go to the uh, output file and I think we're ready to roll. So let's go back to the presentation. I'm not gonna do this, but after you have made these changes, it's important to save changes to the model um, you can actually switch on um, uh, um, a switch that will be able, which will enable um, differences between the base and derived system to be highlighted in colour so that you can see what you've tampered with. And then you run the reform system in the same way as any other reform system, um, as, sorry, any other system, and just ticking the check the checkbox um, and that's it so that's what you do to uh, um, either amend an existing policy or to um, test out or create a new policy I hope that's all clear the important thing in the activity is to replicate what we've done in this session 
So add a new system, introduce four new policies. Um, I'm, I'm suggesting we don't do any more amending of existing policies because there aren't that many existing policies. But the four policies um, that um, I'm wanting us to go through and introduce is a child benefit payable only in respect of double orphans or disabled children, an old age uh, benefit available only to those in households below the food poverty line, a disability benefit for disabled people below the food poverty line and a youth benefit for unemployed young people. All of those you have a go at and then we'll go through with you afterwards um, and to see how you all get along. Um, and that I think is it as far as I'm concerned. Just remains to say thank you.